So then we'll dive into the maritime VC trends a little bit more. So as we, as I always, oh, that's too fast. As we already seen, 36,000 deals uh, in 2021, almost 670 billion of capital that got deployed into um, the whole, uh, in, in, as a whole in venture capital. How, how much would you expect that the that got uh, that of that money got got into um, sorry close to zero exactly that's correct we have we have only seen like two hundred and nine deals worth two point eight billion that went to maritime related companies which is remarkably small so I was pretty interested by how did it come that like an industry that is responsible for transporting ninety percent of all the goods you use or consume only gets this amount of money in terms of innovation, in terms of new, te new technologies. Yeah, <laughs> that's the percentages, of course. Like you can see, it's less than 1% even of all the money or all the deals that happened uh, last year. So why is that? Basically, the shipping industry has like specific characteristics that really define them and makes it more difficult than other industries um, to innovate in and to test, test out new technologies. First, they have, they have to deal with very large assets, like Rudy pointed out, ships of 300 meter. When you break down your ship in the middle of the ocean, you're facing very high costs to salvage it. Of course, the ships, they don't make money if they stay in port, they need to be moving. So dwell time is expensive. Any, any um, maintenance work that needs to be done costs a lot of money because basically that means that the ship has to be in port to, um, to perform the works to, to send out the engineers. Other difficulty is that ships are remote. You're not always connected to your vessel. That's also something that uh, Euronef is, is, is trying to tackle with the collaboration with Zetaco. And shipping is also considered as a commodity product actually, because, and it's therefore it's, it's very cost driven because if you can find someone who's gonna give you the same uh, transportation in the same time window for a lower price, why wouldn't you choose for them? This makes decision making in the maritime industry regarding to new technologies very risk averse and therefore they are pretty much a late adopter in terms of new technologies. But some things have changed the last couple of years. Connectivity is a little is improving, like for example, the case that we see with Setaco, new solutions are diving up that can increase connectivity. Technologies have matured. Think about edge computing. You don't have to send so much information through the cloud anymore. Increased feasibility of the sector in general. Think about COVID, think about the congested ports. Um, I mean, the sector has really gained some attention in the last year. And also more and more regulation that push the industry forward to um, engage with new technologies instead of only looking at the cost side of things. Therefore, the maritime industry has the potential to leapfrog basically 20 years of innovation. As we have seen, for example, the, uh, the same dynamic in uh, developing countries. Uh, for example, uh, some countries in Africa directly converted to payments to their phone, while they don't have the, the initial infra infrastructure of proper banks and proper um, yeah, financial infrastructure. What we can see here is basically like since 2012, we have seen more and more companies uh, entering this uh, maritime industry as well. It the number of companies basically tripled in the, over the last 10 years. Most of them are still in early stages, as you can see from their total funding amounts. And also remarkable is that more than 50% of them are actually based out of Europe. In terms of the amount of companies that we're seeing, we basically divided them um, into uh, several innovation spaces. In terms of the amount of companies, um, smart shipping basically has the most companies in them. Smart ports is the second one and trade facilitation is the third one. But what about funding? This is a, more or less the same graph as you saw before, but only taking into account the companies that got, uh, that are uh, active in the maritime industry. If we forget a little bit about 2019, because this was a little bit of an anomaly as Flexport um, 
had a huge uh, had a huge funding round of almost one billion dollars back then. You can basically see that in 2021, the capital that got de got deployed almost tripled in the in the maritime space, which is also pretty interesting to see. And if you look at the data that we have up until today, you can see that like for 2022, we're almost in in the half of the year, but we're always uh, we're almost touching the, the, the same mark as, as last year. Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the major fundings that we saw. Like I said, Flexport um, was uh, a big topic, uh, was, a, was a huge uh, round. Um, and these are also the, the, the three main topics that got the most funding. So supply chain visibility, digitization, and decarbonization. As you can see as well, they're all pretty recent deals. Um, I'm also backed by pretty high, uh, high top-level uh, investment funds. Andreessen Horowitz, Goldman Sachs Growth, uh, Microsoft Venture Fund. To end with, there's also uh, a couple of very interesting and very big um, maritime, maritime tech m as that have, has, has been uh, done in the last year. For example, Navis got acquired by Excel KKR, uh, and Storm Geo got acquired by Alpha Laval boat for um, somewhere around $440 uh, million. So where will we focus on um, for doing investments? It's main, mainly in the real-time transportation visibility solutions, digitization uh, of maritime transactions and workflows, decarbonization, and optimization of cargo operations. So if you're a founder um, and you're developing solutions in these kind of sectors and in these kind of areas, please feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to connect to you uh, to our corporate partner network and to our investor network. Thank you.